Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Flying Circus, where I talk about the planes in the book. In this episode, let's talk about the rest of the airplanes in the core airplane catalog, which I will be splitting into three parts with the multi-planes format because that's much more manageable. For these remaining airplanes, there isn't much of a unifying theme, they are after all, the planes that fit niches that still haven't been fulfilled, and while they might be used by future playbook expansion, those playbooks don't exist yet. But anyway, let's get going with the Rath NA 16D first, an old rotary dogfighter renewed for a new role. The late 1580s and early 1590s were a time in scout aircraft design known as the Lift Wars, where experience in the war was teaching designers that the most vital thing for fighter aircraft was high lift, this led to many aircraft with three or more wings, of which the Rath NA 16 was a runner up. Though developed in parallel to the Ritter Model D, the Rath NA 16 development was interrupted by the fall of the UWF, and the resulting machine was released years later. Its unusual wing configuration was supposed to give the benefits of a sesquiplane design and a triplane, though the machine is ultimately too stable. Probably the single greatest advantage the machine has is the reinforced weapon mount above the wing, added at the last minute to try and give the plane more utility. Without its above-mentioned reinforced weapon mount, the Rath NA-16 would have been just another slow twin machine gun dogfighters, with it however, it is more like a slower but more agile and stable version of the Mark Tentator C with more weapon variety, like twin light machine guns, precision rifle, twin scatter guns, mechanical balloon gun, quad SMG, and of course, the light repeating cannon, giving its pilot a lot of choices in how to handle their next air battle. And yes, SMG was used in aircraft during World War I, even goddamn pistol was used in weird ass turret mount for the observer, the earliest example was the Pistola Mitragliatris Villar Perosa M1915, a twin-barreled submachine gun with extremely high rate of fire, it was also probably the first SMG ever invented. It sounds good on paper as its high fire rate increases the chance of hitting the target in the brief interception time, but as the war goes on, airplane became tougher and faster, the slow speed of the 9mm Glinty was insufficient from the start anyway. But, on the ground, the Villar Perosa was proven to be a popular squad weapon for Royal Italian Force Shock Troopers, because of its sheer rate of fire makes it a terrifying weapon at close range. Each weapon was manned by a four-man team, one guy will man the gun, the other three guys will carry ammo for it, some 5,000 rounds for a single team, which to be honest sounds a bit optimistic because early light automatic weapons aren't exactly what you would call reliable. In Flying Circus, SMG is as expected, only good at knife range due to the slow bullet, it would take two SMG to have the damage potential of a single machine gun, but that won't bring in any cost-effective advantage in mass or thaler. The only good thing about SMG is that it's light, and it still gives four hits per gun, which means if you have like, four of them, you're going to get 16 hits for a rather high chance to crit, but this crit is also very easy to be stopped by any amount of armor. In a way, SMG is a crit-seeking weapon like scatter gun, and both wants their target to be really close for maximum effect. Final conclusion for the Rath NA 16D, it's reliable, stable, tough, and yet is still very agile with a wide variety of weapon choices for just about any scenario, it's well worth its price tag too, its only flaw is that it's just a bit too slow for modern standard, but considering its age, it's truly a hidden gem. Next, we have the Braun model DC Puma, a plane that's honestly more like a UFO. Many of the small nations, principalities, and free cities of Himmelgard were at various times incapable of securing orders of warplanes from the major nations, making alliances and armed neutrality difficult. A roaring trade in knockoff designs soon followed, with the most popular being the Braun Model D, derived from the Theller Cobra series and often considered superior. Of these, the DC is the odd one out, unlike the others in its series, it is equipped with a remarkable engine, a large contra-rotary, where the engine spins one way while the propeller and crankshaft spin the other, reducing torque. Furthermore, the machine was equipped with a large four-bladed propeller, which gave it a frightening ability to recoup lost speed, the result was a machine that while not fast, could hold a sharp turn at a fixed speed quite nearly indefinitely, and even gain speed while in combat turns using its unique double-throated carburetor. So, you are probably asking, what the heck is a contra-rotary engine, well, this is the Siemens Halsk SH.3, an 11-cylinder air-cooled engine used by the Siemens Schucker D.3, which is what the Braun Model DC is based on, half of it at least. Essentially, the engine block will turn anti-clockwise, while the crankshaft and the propeller will turn clockwise, which makes the inner gear working a bit complicated, but it brings two advantages. 
One is that this increase the efficiency of the engine by reducing the gear needed for higher RPM as the engine is effectively running at 1800 RPM despite only running at 900, two is that unlike usual rotary engine, the counter rotating mass effectively cancel out gyroscopic forces of the engine, meaning anything with this engine is a lot more stable and controllable while still being light. Unfortunately, Germany was having castor oil shortage so this caused the initial batch of the engine to just plain stop working after 7 or 10 hours, later batch fixed this problem but by then it's too late. Now, let's actually take a look at the plane and yes, you are looking at it correctly, this thing has a climb rate of 9 with full fuel and 12 at half, more than enough to just completely render majority of the airplanes in this catalog ineffective against it because it can just move away from anything and pick its targets at its leisure. It has high climb rate, high overspeed, larger ideal altitude range, high fuel range, and high boost with high drop off so you will never be out of speed, it even has altitude throttle, so at low altitude, you can just push past the speed limit with WEP boosting and reach like 19 speed. This would have made it the best energy fighter in the entire core catalog, if not for two things, it only has a single machine gun, and it's rather fragile, you can reach 36 speed safely, but if you turn hard at that speed, this plane will snap. This also means that it can't take many bullets at all as otherwise it can't perform its trick without snapping anymore, otherwise, it's an excellent energy fighter with a ridiculous climb rate. And while it doesn't have a variant, there's mention of Airzat's Model DC, which are Braun Model D and, funny enough, Feller Cobra which the Braun Model D is copied from to be modified with a rotary engine and high power propeller in an attempt to reach the performance of the Braun Model DC. There's no Braun Model D in the airplane catalog, but example made from the Feller Cobra does not work at all, it's just too heavy when compared to the Braun Model D, don't use them unless you want to die in a terrible plane, but the Braun Model DC, this thing is just excellent as both an energy and dogfighter at a higher altitude than most things, you just might have trouble shooting tougher things down. Lastly, we have the Ritter Model S Fink, basically a Singvogel but even better and more expensive. The last of the Ritter Rotary, the Model S consumed nearly half a decade of the designer's life in perfecting it, it's a redesign of the Model F, improved in every way and carried the frightening W03 230 horsepower engine, both wings had to be given dihedral angles to compensate for the immense torque. The Fink had aggressive turn characteristics, robust construction, and could outrun anything that could outturn it, though they never completely replaced the Model F, it was soon known and feared by its enemies, and it was the last best chance for the doomed Mackie Republics. Though rare, many dogfight aces consider them to be the best rotary biplanes in the world, but few survived, most of them cut apart for the engines after Mackie surrendered, so each one is treasured. Like I said, this thing is just plain a better and a more expensive Singvogel, it's way faster, twice as tough, still has two massive bomb, but slightly less agile, and it's worth every single Thaler for its price, if you can handle its rather high instability. Basically, if you can afford a high-end dogfighter, this is what you should be looking for. Also I just found it amusing that Ritter planes basically come in three tiers of price and performance so no matter how empty your wallet is, you will always find something you can use. As for the variant, there's one, called Model TF Elster which is just a Model S with 6 thickness 2 armor and twice the ammo for the guns, good for ground attack, not so good in air combat. So, if you just want an excellent dogfighter with a Thaler to pay for it, the Model S might just fits you. And that's all on these three airplanes, the heavily armed Rathena 16D that can turn its guns quickly on target, the vertical climbing Braun Model DC Puma that can fight at practically any altitude, and the excellent Ritter Model S Fink that serves well as an example of what a high-end biplane should look like, anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.